Think you know how to read a face? This is Robert Manny, host of Guys Guys TV. This week, my special guest is face reader and psychic Lydia Dustin. It all starts right here, right now on Guys Guys TV. You can also catch me on KCAA Radio here in Southern California and Guys Guys Radio, my worldwide podcast. Guys Guys TV, Guys Guys Radio, thanks for your support. Okay, we're going to talk about the metaphysical now, and we're going to go in and talk to an amazing person that can read faces. Lydia Dustin is known for ability to perceive the energy of people living and in spirit and of things and places. She's like a real life Harry Potter, a wizard raised by muggles. She was adopted <laughs> by two skeptical college English professors and raised in a strict traditional Irish character. Catholic family, but unbeknownst to her ad adopted parents, her biological family were psychics, witches, folk heroes, healers, and their gifts and traditions go all the way back to the mystical islands of Santa Maria and San Miguel in the Azores. And later in life, Lydia opened to her gifts while training to be a healer at the Rise Thomas Institute of Energy Medicine. She went on to hone her psychic abilities and study Reiki with her mentor and a guest on Guys Guys Radio and our friend Lisa Campion. She's now a master Reiki and energy healer. And Lydia also brings two worlds together into a unique psychic healing experience. It's powerfully mystical, yet comfortable and always entertaining. I discovered Lydia on Instagram, I believe, where she would put out some cards at the beginning of the week and you would choose one and kind of get a mini reading. And also she had the ability to read people's faces and I found it uncanny and I learned a lot about you know, people's faces and how to look at them and the difference between people's eyes, the right and the left eye. So I want to have her on the show, do a demonstration. We're gonna read some people and she's gonna read me and my family and also some celebrities. So welcome to Guys Guys Radio, Lydia Dustin. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm my, well, thank you. All right, my pleasure. Okay, let's get right to it. So you have an interesting and eclectic mix of gifts, Reiki, Tarot, face reading, psychic. Uh, let me know if I'm missing anything. When did you <laughs> discover you had these wonderful gifts? And then when you found out about it, what did you do? So at first I was a child and I would see mystical creatures and I would have dreams that would come true. And then I learned that I was crazy and it was all in my head. So I suppressed it till I was um, probably in my 40s and my family members started to pass away and they would come visit me. And um, eventually I thought I should study this. So I went to school and now I really use my abilities to help other people that think they're crazy understand their mystical and psychic experiences. So you know, I get to be the one to tell them they're not yeah. crazy. You know, it's amazing because I've interviewed a number of uh, metaphysical uh, healers and psychics and almost to a person the gift came to them early on and they suppressed it and then it came back later, many times in like their 20s or so. It's interesting that it took all the way till you got to your 40s to really to blossom that way. When that happened for you, what was your feeling about it? What did you do? What was specifically was the triggering incident if there was one? Um, I was so skeptical that I would have mystical experiences. Like someone was like, oh, my house is haunted. Can you come over? And I would feel or perceived spirits in the house. I didn't believe myself till I went and Googled the house and proved that those people live there. Then I was shocked that I was right. So I really almost had this cat and mouse game where I would perceive something and then double check to make sure I wasn't crazy and wow. making it up. That's, that's amazing. So uh, we talked about um, reading faces when we were uh, offline getting ready for this interview because I found that so fascinating. I don't really know other folks who do that. I'm sure there are. Um, how, first of all, how'd you learn how to read faces? And then the interesting thing is, I noticed that one, you need to, to read the face, the person should be facing the camera, I guess that helps. And then there's a difference between the overall countenance and their right eye and their left eye, and even their youthful countenance versus their adult countenance. How does that all work? I know I threw a lot at you. That's all right. So I feel people. So ever since I was little, when adults would smile and be like, oh no, everything's fine. I would go, oh my God, there's an emergency. Cause I always knew when people were lying. And then when I was older, I'm like, oh no, I'm just being judgmental. They're a nice person. But then I'd be like, oh no, they're not. Like I can just perceive who people are behind their facade. And um, I didn't know it was a thing. I just always did it. And then I, um, we did eye gazing at, when I was at the energy medicine school and I was looking in my friend's eye 
And I started to see all this stuff about her marriage and her life. And I um, thought I was making it up, but she said all those things were true. So I realized if I literally looked in there, um, this is the personality eye, the eye yeah. where you can like That's be cute and like right, put right on eye. a little facade. The right, the right eye. Your right eye, the dominant side. So okay. like if you're in a bad mood and you're like, yeah, I'm good. And you kind of try to put on a face, this eye will look happy. But your left eye, it, you cannot put a mask on it. So I realized, oh, when I look at the left eye, I get who they really are, like the, who they're honestly, you know, what's really going on. And um, it, it's quite fascinating that you can see, so, and I literally feel how they look in their eye. Like if they're in energies like coming right out at me in this eye and suppressed in this eye, I'm like, oh, they're like this huge personality, but they play really, really small. Or opposite, if they have like little energy in this eye, huge energy in this eye, I'm like, oh, they're really trying to be a lot more and live a life that is beyond their means energetically. Like they might be introverted and they're trying to be extroverted all the time. So do I you, just feel like I feel it. Do you, um, the difference between, because some of the photos we shared and talked about, we had the, the uh, child version of a celebrity and then the adult right. version and even with myself. What is the difference there? What do you look for? And do you see, do people change or are they who they are? What, um, what I really noticed is that it depends um, with someone that's really um, dramatic, like someone like Johnny Depp. When I look at him as a child, I kind of see who he is. So when we're little before the age of six, we kind of are who we are. And then when we're brought up and kind of you know, naturalized into being an appropriate person and adult, a lot of times we lose kind of who we are, but if there's like an abusive situation, then the person is a completely different person. And um, it's, it's kind of fun. Like, it's amazing. And I think once your viewers learn how to do this, it's going to be something people just check out pictures online because it's amazing when you know what to look for, what you can see. How about, um, you know, their life experiences and even if they've taken drugs and stuff, does that impact then their countenance and the vibe what you see as an adult versus their child like version yeah so i it's funny like i literally feel that so if i am actually looking at someone let's say that was like a pothead um in high school or whatever i might start to feel a little high and i'll be like oh you know <laughs> did they they go oh my gosh like they did but so um so in a way i look into the eyes and then feel um and sometimes even hear kind of like what they say to themselves or what they always say. I get that a lot. People go, oh my God, my dad always said that phrase. And I'll just hear it when I look into it, into people's eyes. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's you get, never know what you're gonna get. Let's, uh, then you do tarot also. Now, how do you, mm -hmm. it, does the tarot reading uh, help uh, embellish your face reading or is it separate? Um, it, well, usually if someone comes in like a client, I'll just lay out cards for them. It's almost like the introduction to kind of let us know what really needs to happen during our session together. And um, again, being skeptical, there are 78 cards, 78. If you have studied statistics, it's amazing how the cards will lay out and each card lays out in a way that means something. It will map out what's going on in their life and to have people just be like blown away. And I too, I'm blown away, that I, but it's always right. And I just, statistically can't figure out how it's always right. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into, uh, if it's okay, my special guest, Lydia Dustin. She's a psychic face reader, Reiki master, all kinds of metaphysical tools she has and gifts at her disposal. And I think it would be fun. Let's talk about a couple of celebrities, people that everybody knows. And uh, Kim Kardashian, you, we, talked, we talked about her. So what do you see? Yeah, so we, had, we um, talked about her. Just for my own reference, I have a picture just here with me to look into. So I see when she was a little girl, her left eye is really bigger and warmer than her right eye, which means that she's naturally a healer and an empath. So she was probably a very sensitive child. And when I look at her eye, I see that she's not looking, her energy isn't coming out of her eye to me. So it means she's really stuck kind of in her head because um, her energy, I feel like is not what it's supposed to be. And when I look in her eye, I just feel like even as a little girl, she knows that who she is is not correct. And um, and yeah, it's a little painful. And then when I look at her as an adult, her um, soul light looks almost, um, 
I want to say dead, but very like dissociated. Like she, um, I feel like she's almost playing a part as herself. Like who she is, is um, something she's had to, like an actress, like put on. And um, I, I think she's kind of a lonely, sad person. And I, I feel like she needs people that really want to get to know who she actually is and connect with her heart. But um, I think she spends a lot of time acting um, like Amazing. someone else. Amazing with so many, uh, you know, billions of followers on social media and the world at her fingertips. I guess, you know, it is like sometimes it's lonely at the top, but she seems like a seems like a nice person. We had an event that she showed up at when I worked in advertising and she came in, she did her job. She was a real pro and uh, got a pretty good vibe from her. Um, how she about, a, go ahead. I was saying that that never goes away. So she has a really, really big heart, but I think it probably gets hurt um, because of the business she's in. So if people say mean things, sure. it probably does hurt her. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the Rolling Stones are on tour, their 60th anniversary, their lead singer. We all know Mick Jagger. He just got over the virus. He's back out there. He seems like unbelievable at 78. I saw a clip of him dancing and singing and running around the stage after uh, getting better from uh, from the virus. And uh, just amazing. What do you see when you see Mick Jagger? He's like, you know, he's lived the ultimate rock star life. Is he a super ego maniac or he is a good guy and just playing the part? When uh, I found a picture of him as like a youth, he's probably like 14 and he just looks like just like um, just excited and a little nervous and just like, like whatever happens, happens. Like, it, which is just like, he's going to jump on the bus wherever it goes. He's going to have a good time. He'll see what happens. He doesn't have any plans. He doesn't have an agenda. If it's fun, he'll, uh, he'll have fun if it's fun. And if it's not, he'll figure out a way to have fun. Like he's kind of like a kid. Like even when I look at him as an adult, he feels like a kid. And uh, he just has this energy that's just like, I'm just gonna go do whatever. I'm just gonna dance and sing and have fun and live my life and whatever happens, happens. And he's just, it's like he's on an adventure and he like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like he, I think the adventure of being a rock star and singing and dancing just is so fun that he just does it because he loves it. Not because he's a celebrity, because it makes him so happy just to be a big kid and have fun with his friends. You know, it sounds very accurate from everything I've read about him. I'm a big fan of the Stones that um, he doesn't get stuck in the past and he's always like in the now and always pointed forward. And even though he is a, a planner and everything, I, with all the stuff going on with that brand, if you will, he has to be, but he seems to uh, just be open to like what's next and just keep going. And I think that probably keeps him young and vital. His energy is obviously is he's got great energy because uh, you know when you're interacting with uh, fifty thousand to hundred thousand people in one show and you're seventy eight years old, I mean you're, that's a real exchange of energy. So let's move to somebody on the maybe the other side of the ledger, uh, Putin in uh, Russia. Obviously, it's, I find him difficult to look at. Um, maybe he's misunderstood, but uh, he's probably the most unpopular person in the world right now. Yeah, I am. Um, so he is fascinating because he is um, a legit sociopath. So when you first, I found three pictures of him from his own website. So these are pictures that he promotes. And um, it, for his official prof um, presidential picture, his eyes look completely equal. So you would think he's a balanced, happy, normal guy. But when you look behind that, he is like um, dark and you can see that all he has all this mental energy, but it doesn't come out into the world. It's all behind his viewpoint. So I feel that he can only see his own point of view. And he there's nothing in the world that can make him see anything that he doesn't already believe. And he is um, very dark. Like he has a very pessimistic view. Like um, he doesn't never gonna trust anything except what he thinks, mm -hmm. even if there's proof. The, uh, how about, uh, I know we didn't talk about him, but uh, Trump, have you read Trump? I did read Trump. I read him um, on, a, on my um, Facebook. And uh, as a little boy, he broke my heart. I felt like he was like a piece of furniture in his house. Like they're like, that's my painting. That's my you know sofa. That's my son. And he was just really treated like a commodity that he had to be who they wanted him to be. And that was 
all of his, that was it. It didn't matter who he was. And my heart really broke because I think it was a very scared, lonely child. Like I think they were somewhat um, militant in their parenting and he just seemed terrified into kind of like beat, not like they hit him, but physically and mentally kind of, he had to do what they said and that was it. And it didn't matter who he was. Fascinating. Yeah, I felt bad for him. Hey, Lydia Dustin, my special guest on Guys Guys Radio, we're talking about face reading and other metaphysical things. Can you read an animal's face? I can, yeah. Um, I, well, I, I call it talking. Like I, I, I always know what my dog wants because um, they just, I feel the energy of like, oh, I want food. I want you to pick me up. But also there are some animals that people have where the animal's almost like a protector or like a person, not that they're actually a person but they do have different personalities. And sometimes people do wonder why their animal is acting a certain way. And sometimes there is, the animal can, through their eyes, kind of communicate what's going on with them. Is your gift something you can turn on and off? In other words, you go to the supermarket, you're on the checkout line, you see somebody, you're like, oh boy, they got a tough life. Or, wow, things are going great there. Or like, this person has an illness or uh, what do you see? And it, can you turn it on and off? Um, to an extent. I always like, if I'm going to quote unquote, read someone, I talk about it like a snow plow, you know, it's like I drop the plow when I'm working to like read okay. people, but it fits an emergency. If someone is like, like, I hate to say it, but if I'm walking in the grocery store and someone is deathly ill, I'll, their energy, I'll know they're dying. Or if someone, um, if people have a paranormal hobby where they go to ghost things and they feel, um, I walk by them and I'm like, oh my gosh, they, they're super haunted. But those right. are extreme cases. Okay. Well, um, you were kind enough. You read myself, you read me, my son, and my wife. But let's, uh, and I'm here now, and people can see me now who are watching the show on Guys Guys TV on YouTube or Rumble. Um, what did you see when I sent you the photos? And what do you see now? And is there a difference? Because if you vibe with the energy when you see somebody, and this is our first time talking today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, I can tell um, that you two have a warm, like a warm right eye that just means that um, yeah. you're a very warm person, but you do have this, um, but you just, like you are like a masculine dude, like you're not going to just burst into tears and um, you're more of a protector. So like, you're not going to go start a bar fight. Um, but if someone, if you see someone picking on someone or hurting someone that doesn't deserve it, then you will take them out if you have to. But, um, but you're really sweet. And uh, it's funny, I think that you probably don't trust people off the bat, like super, super quickly. But once you do, you are their friend for their whole life and they can count on you like their brother forever. Cause you're a real loyal, very, very loyal, kind guy and friend. I am a loyal friend, that's true. And I vibe with people pretty much right away. I get a sense like, yeah, or, or I don't know. I try to keep an open mind. I usually trust people until they, deem themselves untrustworthy. I've kind of shifted that habit over the years because there's so many, so many disappointments you run into that way because, you know, when it gets to a certain point and push comes to shove with so many people, uh, we get disappointed a lot. So we have to not leave ourselves wide open to that. So part of that is I see that a little bit with my son where he sees the world through these beautiful, innocent eyes. And I'm keep thinking like, oh, I, I hope he can hold on to that for as long as possible because once that kind of goes and you start to become more guarded, then then life changes. It's like you know, you go to the circus and you realize that the, you know, the the bearded lady was a was faking or something, and then it's like, oh, is life bogus? That type of thing. So you read my son, he's nine. What did you see? Um, I saw that he is like a super go-getter. Like this kid is like the Duracell bunny. Remember that old commercial? Well, that's and true. I was just like. He, I feel like he's so good at stuff and so interested in stuff that he wants to do kind of everything all the time and his yes. energy, even, yes. re, uh, yes. even remembering yes. it, I was like, woo. And um, I just worry that he has to just um, have, he, just slow down, you know? Yes. But he, um, and just understand that even Superman has a day off and that it's okay if he like gets like, um, if he goes 80%, mm -hmm. but I feel like he's just passionate and he just like loves stuff, you know? And, that's, um, that's super and he's sweet and he's sweet like I also read your wife and um he just has a really sweet gentle energy like he's such a sweetie pie and um he's just a lovey he's a great kid 
Yeah, we're very lucky. And that's why I, I just feel protective that you want to maintain, you, you love it when people see the world through loving eyes. It's like they're close to spirit that's coming through and then things happen and it's like, oh, they start to get disappointed and then the veil comes and they start to guard themselves and all of that. It's just, you know, so you really, uh, this is my only child. I, I root for him to have that continue. And uh, so thank you for reading there. And then my wife, who's the smartest person that I know, <laughs> what did you get there? And I'm not saying that because she's my wife. She actually, and I know a lot of really smart people. She is the most intelligent person I know. Yeah, uh, she is. I, she's like a, I call, there's certain people I call them like a unicorn. She's like a unicorn. She is nice, kind, and gentle and sweet yes. and freaking brilliant and smart. But it's like, she's brilliant and smart and she's really, really nice. And she's gorgeous. I don't know if you guys have seen her but um thank you she's just so well balanced and uh again like you know she's not, yeah she also could have fun and she's you know a regular person but she just has so many gifts and they really haven't gone to her head because she does have that huge heart mm -hmm. what do she's you get when you look in the mirror you read yourself have you read yourself lydia um, i take it's so funny sometimes i wonder and i if i take a picture of myself like i can't read myself live like that's just for some reason so i'll take a picture um, and, uh, it's hard because sometimes it's almost cause like, I'm trying to be in a good mood that day. And then I'll be like, oh, crap. Like, and, I look crap and I try to like maybe change it by meditating or getting myself excited, but it's weird. It is weird. No reading, even yourself. Cause I think we all want to have a facade sometimes and be maybe the better version of ourselves that day or online or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, tell everybody, Lydia, you're really fantastic. I love the work you're doing. And for those who are watching us on Guys Guys TV, we're going to do a little separate segment where Lydia is going to teach everybody some of the basics in terms of how to read somebody's face. But first, tell us where people can find out more about you and uh, how they can get in touch with you if they want to get a reading. Yeah, you can check out um, my Instagram like you did. I'm, I'm at Lydia X Dustin or um, LydiaDustin.com. Or um, Lydia Dustin on Facebook. I try to keep it real with a simple use my mm. first and middle name to keep it easy, you know. Okay. And come check it out. I do funny videos on Instagram sometimes, or I read card, whatever I feel like reading cards mm. or pictures, or I try to make it interesting. Okay. And it's L Y D I A D U S T I N, right? That's me. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Fantastic job. Keep doing the great work. Thank you so much for everything. And uh, we'll, we'll have you back. We'll do it again soon, all right? Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. If you enjoy the content and interviews I do each and every week on Guys Guys Radio and TV, please support me by subscribing to our channels. Thanks so much.